off to a late start on this warm but peaceful evening in the skybox at the uh, corner of the level. I'm Res Mason, and today we will be programming. Oh, let me get it started again. <laughs> There we are. All right. There we are. Give me one more second. Okay, all set up. The Wireworld Player. A weird little simulation where interesting things happen to pixels that are next to each other. And if you know what you're doing, you can make them perform interesting tricks. Um, for the longest time, this project was all about uh, converting an old Flash Wireworld simulator into HTML5 and JavaScript. <clears throat> we are officially past that. Um, there is something called Hash Life, and I began conducting some on-stream research about Hash Life. Uh, during the last episode and I did actually I did <clears throat> a little bit more research um, there is a uh, there's a project that implements hash life in Python um, that also is a pretty decent write-up now to explain what's going on the author shoves code in there so I'm not going to claim that I haven't looked at any code uh, while implementing my own, or trying to, um, but this uh, this write-up um, is another uh, substantial iteration on the write-ups of Jenny Owen and Thomas Rokiki and Bill Gosper on the same algorithm. Um, at the end of the last stream, I had a bunch of research and an expanded understanding that I did not read in preparation for today's episode. Sorry about that. And a new engine called Macrocell that is a copy of, I think, the Naive engine. I forget what formed its basis, but let's find out. Ah, right, so we copied the naive implementation, aka the slow implementation, um, because it's making no attempt to optimize, right? So all of our optimization strategies are absent in Macrocell, because it is so different from all of the work that we put into the... Sorry, one moment. All the work that went into the flat engine that, you know, shoves everything into um, an array buffer and does like pointer arithmetic and all that stuff. Um, we're not relying on any of that. And what we did at the end of the last episode was we took this pattern. Um, There we go. We took this pattern 
um, turn off word wrap. There we go. Right? These, um, these cells that we can see here visually, we found a way to write a method called init cell that takes a bunch of data, which is like the initial data, along with a height, which is like the the height of the um, quad tree that represents this data structure. And it calls itself. So quick reminder, hopefully quick. Um, the way that hash life represents this little universe is the entire universe is, first of all, we fit a box around it that's a power of two. And then we cut that box into quadrants. We cut each quadrant into quadrants. And we cut each of those into quadrants all the way down to um, the pixel level, right? Like if these two pixels and these two pixels formed a node, then this one would have no children, it would just have a value, uh, which I think is tail, yeah. So tail value, head value, dead value, dead value. Um, but if this is the parent, this four by four right here, then the Northwest child would be what we just described. And then the other three children would be wire, wire, dead, dead, right? Wire, wire, dead, dead, wire, wire, dead, dead. All the way up. So every node we just talked about is the child of a larger node, which is the child of a larger node, which is the child of a larger node, until the whole thing is incorporated in this pyramid of nodes. However, there are fewer nodes than that sounds like because that pyramid is canonicalized, meaning, let's see, go back to Rikiki's Dr. Dobbs article. That didn't open. That's weird. Open a new tab. Okay, copy link. Huh. That was weird. Okay. Gonna quit and reopen Safari. Because that was bizarre. Very strange. Um, moving right along. So we just described a pyramid kind of like this, right? This grid has these four quadrants and they have these four quadrants and these four and these four and these four. But what we're actually doing behind the scenes, here we go, is any quadrants that are identical are represented by the same node. So this quadrant up here, white, black, black, white, and this one down here, white, black, black, white, can be represented by this same node, white, black, black, white. This is called canonicalization. The idea is that every node in our pyramid has a unique identifier and a unique state. And if you can, if you can represent its state, from the IDs of its children, then, at least as far as I can tell, then rather than creating a new node, you can just reuse the old one. And this reuse um, is a major contributor to, hopefully, the speed up that we'll get from this macro cell implementation. 
because any work that's done to simulate this node is only computed once, even though it occurs twice at this level. And frankly, anywhere else that it occurs, that same uh, simulated work is repurposed. So we've, we've got that working. Sorry, I'm going to keep that open. Or not that one, but the... This one. Because, you know, we added some values to the node that might not be necessary, actually. Like result. But this is good so far. Um, but we can't see it. <laughs> Right? We don't actually have anything showing up on screen. And that's because, like all the other engines, to draw something on screen, we need to create a mapping of XY coordinates to indices in this, um, in this buffer, this image buffer. And we need to... Sorry, one second. Oh, boy. Well, not my problem. Okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> sorry, one sec. Right. <clears throat> so in order to draw anything in the engine system that we have. We need to give the, uh, the renderer, which is called paper, here we are, paper, um, we need to give it a list of cell grid indices. In other words, we need to be able to tell it um, a number that it uses to look up the corresponding pixel. And to do that, give me one second, naive.js, cell grid indices is only incremented. Is this how we want to do it? So in the last episode, I held off on rendering because honestly it's not actually a high priority it's more important that we understand the system but this is a stream and i need to put something on the screen and i'm emboldened by the fact that we've implemented in itself which is a recursive function that takes um, data from a 2D array and assigns it to individual nodes just a moment Sorry, uh, my partner just gave me dinner, and it looks and smells delicious. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think I can munch on it during the stream. But I will mute my microphone when I do so. Anyway, so in itself is recursively constructing our, um, our canonical quad tree. But it's also populating that quad tree with values based on X and Y coordinates. So it seems to me like this same kind of recursion can be used to draw these things.
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create these cell grid indices. Let's see, naive initialize. So down here, initialize. Um, and cell IDs by grid index, I'll need to make that as well. Cell IDs by grid index. Ah, dot length. Is num cells used? It is, so I'll need all of these actually. Okay. Um, I already have width and height. Okay. So I'm actually going to copy all of the, na the naive implementation. So, is this the same? It is. And down here, return cell grid indices. Cool. Right, and then I'll need to bring this back. So, and then for render down here, head IDs, tail IDs, interesting. Down here in render, instead of iterating like this, I'm going to say, render cell. So I'm copying, basically I'll be copying this. Instead of init though, it'll be render cell, head IDs, tail IDs, top cell, zero, zero. Um, do I want tree height? I think I do. Okay. And now render cell is going to be inspired by init cell. It'll be almost the exact same. It'll have the same behavior. Da, 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 render cell. Um, but it's going to have head IDs, tail IDs, cell. Height x, y. Okay, if height is 2, then we get the we don't, we're not interested in returning anything, but we do want render cell Head IDs, tail IDs, um, just going to grab these, cell dot, northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast, but if height equals 2, then so the leaf is going to have a state, okay? So const state, e well, yeah, const state equals cell dot state, 
And then we go back into here and do switch state. Head IDs dot push, Y times width plus X, tail IDs. I wonder if this is just gonna straight up work. Only one way to find out. Unbelievable. <laughs> well, that was quick. There is seemingly a lot of code reuse. I'm gonna think about that. There's some clever tricks that we might leverage so that this code doesn't get bogged down in functions that look exactly like this. But maybe it's no big deal. We'll find out. Hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, I never came back from... <laughs> okay. I was about to ask for you, the viewer, to wait while I left the room to heap praise on my partner for this delicious little dinner. And then I realized I had BRB open this whole time. Okay, quick recap. The naive render function iterates over all the cells because the states of the cells are easily retrieved from the new cells object, which is a, a 2D array, a matrix. It switches over that, and if the state is ahead, then it pushes the cell IDs by that grid index to head IDs. If it's tail, it does the same thing for tail. We took this and we threw it into render cell, which is just a copy of init cell, except instead of returning a node, it takes in a node down here. It takes in a node and the data structures that are passed into render, right? Where all the head IDs and tail IDs go. And then height x, y, that stays the same. We <clears throat> recursively call render cell on the children, oopsie, the children of the cell, right? So same values that we were calculating in in itself. We are now calculating in um, render cell. But when we get to the leaf nodes, or to the parents of the leaf nodes, um, no, leaf node. When we get to the leaf node, we read the state from the leaf and we just plopped the naive implementations switch statement into there and so it is recursively constructing this rendering so that's nice i wonder if that's in the to-do list um new rendering system bitmap not necessary Cool. Um, let's see if we can transfer. We can. We can't transfer back though, right? If we go to flat and turbo until we reach two. Wait a minute. No, something's wrong. Oh yeah, a bunch of stuff is missing up here. That's interesting. So if we go to flat and reset. And then we go to macro cell. Here, instead of that, I'm just going to load this up in another page so we can tab back and forth between browsers. 
Oh, I see the problem. Okay, check this out. That's actually really funny. So, <laughs> we've got, um, we've got heads and tails showing up, but only uh, in this area, which is strange. It's cut off here, and it's cut off here. And if you take the approximate cutoff point here and the approximate cutoff point there, that forms a square. We are miscalculating the height of the whole thing. So, height. Um, I should give this a name other than height. So tree height is one. I'm going to say tree height is two. Let's try that. Error. What's wrong? Okay. Hmm. What if I do sizes two? Oh, interesting. While size is less than max dimension. While size times two is less than, nope. While size over two is less than max dimension. And then it bungles it. Same problem. Okay. I've decided that figuring out how to render it to the screen was a good call because we can now visualize an obvious bug that completely eluded us until this moment. And fixing it is not fixing it by just tweaking magic numbers is a bad idea. Okay, I'm going to BRB again and compliment my partner on dinner and then come back and we are going to dive into this uh, weird bug. And I can think of some clever tricks we can use to tackle that. And back again. Okay. Slightly bumpy ride this stream. No regrets. Dinner is delicious. 
So something we're doing is wrong. And here's what we can do to figure it out. <clears throat> Let's see. First of all, console.log width, oops, not console.log, post debug, width, height, size, mag, um, tree height. Let's see what these actual values are. 800, 600, 1024, 11. Okay. 2 to the power of 11 is 2048. That's actually larger than it needs to be. I'm going to say zero then. Okay. Two to the ten. Ten twenty four. There we go. So now we know that these values are sensible. However, in its cell is not. I'm going to suggest that height equals zero should be the correct thing. In other words, the tree height is like how far up the tree we've gone and Let's see, cells y, x, so state const state equals cells y, x, hang on, uh, nullish array access. Oh, um, optional chaining, MDN optional chaining. Boop. We want the array version. There we go. Cells Y, X, or cell state dot dead. And then we're going to drop this to one. Gonna drop this to zero. Post debug x y fractional. So that's bad. And of course, it's making a bunch of them. I shouldn't have done that. Okay, close that. Reopen. There we are. So the height, oh sorry, so the x and y is being improperly calculated. So the offset should be, instead of minus 3, let's try minus 1. Um, and we're also going to do post debug, but this time we're going to say if math.random is less than 0 0.01. So we will statistically get 100th. I know that I could base this frequency on X and Y, but I'm lazy. All I'm saying is I don't want to see all these, I just want to see a hundredth of them. Should be enough. Oh. No luck. Oh. Because I should be calling it as a function. There we go. Okay. So... These are 
even and odd numbers, which suggests that this is the correct uh, level of, um, you know, the uh, the correct level of. Uh, It's like the pixel level. Oh, and so we are going to do the same thing in render. Zero. Um, this should be fine. And we're going to say let. care. We don't care. Heads and tails will only occur on wires, and wires only occur in the actual bounding box of the simulation, so we don't need to worry about boundaries here. And this becomes height minus one. Let's try that. No luck. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, post debug. Get rid of that. Okay. <clears throat> I hope I wasn't moving too fast, but basically, um, there was a bug introduced. So there's a certain class of bug that occurs when you're programming something, uh, and you're ignorant. <laughs> um, when I chose height equals 2 in the init cell at the end of the last stream, um, it was arbitrary, I think. We can check the recording if we want. I, I don't want, I don't care uh, at the moment. But, you know, I did what worked, basically. There was a, a null reference, probably, or something. And I set this until the values were correct, or until of the post debug was reporting properly. And so... Sorry, one second. There we are. Um... And so, uh, it worked. It seemed to work. It didn't encounter any errors. But it turns out this 2 and this minus 1 minus 2 um, ended up improperly iterating over everything. But now we've got it sorted out. We know for a fact that everything is working properly. Um, we also know from our debug log here, we've got 4,608 nodes in our cache now. Um, and now if we go from macro cell to flat, perfect. Um, and if we simulate past a solution of two, um, there we go. Two is prime. We go back to macrocell, and it completely resets. It completely forgets. Um, we might as well implement reset, because reset is hardly any different, right? In fact, reset, let me think. Um, hmm. 
Hmm. So, borrowing from this John H.W., let me see his full name. Borrowing from John Williamson, um, he is using a Python utility object called a least recently used cache. So remember, as we simulate, the values representing the state of the universe are going to change. Um, and the whole quad tree, the whole canon canonicalized quad tree, sits in a cache, this cache here. Um, it's a cache of macro cells, which are these objects. So this cell template has all the, qua uh, all the fields of a macro cell. And we're just filling the cache with it. And um, at some point, the cache is going to be too big and we'll want to get rid of what we aren't using because there's going to be macro cells in that cache representing states uh, at some level, right? That will likely never be revisited again. Or if they will be revisited, it's going to be a long time in the future. So instead of storing them, we will eliminate some number of things in the cache. And what's that number going to be? It's going to be the things in the cache that have been... Sorry, one second. Oh, and that links to Wikipedia. Fair enough. Least recently used cache. So, I'm not 100% sure how Wikipedia is... Do I want to stop the explanation and read? Yes. Discards the least recently used items first. Great. Requires keeping track of what was used when. Yup. Which is expensive if one wants to make sure the algorithm always discards the least recently used item. General implementations require keeping age bits for cache lines and track the LRU cache line based on age bits. Um, just thinking. I wonder if my macro cells, <clears throat> excuse me, borrowing from the linked implementation, you know, the linked implementation has this next field. The idea is a cell can occupy a position in a linked list by just pointing at the next cell. Um, if I made a doubly linked list out of all the macro cells, which remember is not that big a deal, it's an in place data structure. It's like a vein in a wheel of blue cheese, it's just integrated into the whole. If I made macro cells a doubly linked list, then any time I use a macro cell, I could remove it from the list and add it to the front of the list. And I could just keep track of which cells, which macro cells are at the back of the list. And then when it's time to get rid of the hundred or thousand or however many macro cells, um, are too old, essentially. I would just iterate through the tail of the doubly linked list. I think that's a strategy worth considering. So, remove unused nodes. Maybe they can, let's see. 
Maybe they can... Maybe mac... Okay, unused macro cells. Remove unused macro cells. Maybe macro cells can be in a doubly linked list. When used, a macro cell is snipped from the list and prepended. Um, removal would just be taking n macro cells off the doubly linked list and deleting them from the map. I'll have to think about that. And then pool removed macro cells um, is kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, I'll just have to think about this. Fortunately, the removing and pooling, all this logic, can wait until I have the other stuff um, implemented. So, um, reset function. I might as well just do that. I'm, I'm kind of stalling, I realize, because the update function is the hard part. Update function some notion of step size. Have I already said that? No. Okay. Okay. Let's see, what did I change again? Obviously the to-do. I implemented render cell. Um, and I fixed all that jazz. Let's see, Macrocell has been changed by Prettier. What changed? White space. Show white space. Okay, whatever. All right. Fixed the recursive iteration in Macrocell engine. And Implemented render. And implemented its render function. That's a good feeling. Cool. That was pretty neat, wasn't it? When it just showed up. Okay, unmuting. <laughs> Man. Counting my blessings. Okay. Reset function. The reset function... in macro cell... Let's compare it with Naive. 
initialize, reset, initialize, Oh, right. Interesting. Next question, what do I do with save data? Save data. Goes into this isn't as hard as it looks. In its cell, get cells, saved head IDs, saved tail IDs. So we pass those in. Um, in its cell, this will probably get a new name at some point soon. Yeah, just in itself for now. Needs a better name though. Um, and then saved head IDs, saved tail IDs. like in here let's see state if <clears throat> state isn't cell state dot dead and saved head IDs let's see maybe maybe I do this Save data dot head IDs isn't null. New set. Otherwise null. Same here. Save data dot tail IDs. Oh, hang on. No, 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 no. The question is whether there's any save data in the first place. equal to null, then we pass in a new set, otherwise it's null. Okay, there we go. So, 
if saved head IDs isn't null and okay. So now we're pasting in the naive implementation. Cell ID is cool that it exists. State is wire. There we go. Let's change it to flat and zip along to boom, two, and now back to macro cell, two. Awesome. Oops. Just being absolutely sure. Yep, that works. All right. So, <laughs> reset function, check. Update function obviously is the tricky one. Um, no change. Implemented the macro cell engines render function, uh, reset function. Um, it's not that. The macro cell engines reset function uh, in its cell function has been moved to its reset function function calls and properly handle save data. There we go. Nice. We're getting there. We're about to climb a mountain, but we got we, we got where we got so far. <laughs> How many to-dos do we have to do? Okay. Ah oh boy. Taking a bite of dinner. Step size is going to be some power of two by which we advance the simulation. Boop, 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 boop. Um, support acceleration. So most hash life implementations. Um, support this idea where step size starts at one and as you run the simulation it doubles and then it doubles again and then it doubles again until it's going really really fast and I'm not sure when it would stop accelerating so let's see impacted by the elimination. Oh, 
Oh, hang on. I'm sorry. Um, macro cells, guids, never get re uh, never get macro cells keep their guids for when they're used again. Maximum GUID is keep an eye on maximum GUID. So, what am I talking about here? Well, um, every macro cell has an ID that is used to um, distinguish it from anything else. And um, Sorry, I'm just thinking through this because any cell can link to any other cell. The only way a macro cell is unused hmm. The only way a macro cell is unused cell is used if its parent is used. Gross. And so are all its children. Maybe this is a bad idea. to think about that. Fortunately, um, least recently used cache. Fortunately, these things exist already. So in a worst case scenario, I just study a bunch of them and figure out how to implement one um, appropriately. Okay just going to focus on the update function. So first of all, um, just going to reread my notes. So we already have all of these. For the macro cell engine, I'm trying to at least get to here. The super speed of hash life um, like, is inevitable in this project, but the difference between turning super speed on and off um, or rather um, the, the notion that a higher level node can accelerate um, exponentially faster into the future. Uh, here we go, this higher level node, not this one. That's the lowest level. This higher level node. Um, that idea, um, which is revolutionary, is...
like a future goal of this. We first want to get macro cells working in the first place. Um, right, so first macro cells. Done, done, done. Update function. That's the tricky stuff. Um, I'm not sure of this either. So this is what I would like to figure out by reading uh, John Williams's Johnny Williams John Williamson's uh, article again. Um, when is the future actually calculated? Because right now the simulation has no future. Right? Boom. It's just that. It is what it is. Um, sorry. Let me redo that. Advance. Macrocell 2. Okay. In the update function. Moron. Okay. So result is null at first. Yeah, this is fine. We leave that empty in in itself. Okay, update. First of all, we know that we need to do this. Top cell equals update cell. Top cell. Tree height, zero, zero. Can tree height, uh, we don't need zero, zero. Tree height, okay. Tree height. Okay, tree height can go on a cell, so it's actually going to be height zero. Uh, ID zero uh, minus one. Because these are integers. Um, okay. Height. So, cell template. Oh, uh, cell template height is uh, zero. Yeah. Because the leaves have a height of zero. And then, um, in init cell. Boom, the leaves have a height of zero, perfect. And then in here, um, height, boom. Which means we no longer need to do child height, right? Um, so render cell no longer needs height. If cell.height, here, child height, height minus one, offset, cool, this is unnecessary, cell dot height minus one, tree height, just gonna comment out the body of update cell real quick. Well, that's broken. <laughs> okay. 
let's find out why. Cell dot height equals zero, then do that, right? That's cell dot height minus one. Hmm. Okay, something is using height improperly. Um, we're going to rename it depth so as not to confuse it with the height of the image. Depth. Uh, tree height becomes tree depth with a capital D. Height with height, 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 depth, 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 child, depth. Let's undo everything. We're going to try this again. Depth. Still working. Tree height becomes tree depth. Still working. Height here becomes depth. Same here, depth, depth. Okay. And then child height becomes child depth. Still working. We're just going to stage these changes real quick. <clears throat> okay. Next, so depth is going to be overwritten. So cell states to leaves just uses a depth of zero. That's totally fair. These leaves have a depth of zero. That's totally fine. Child depth, yep. And then here, depth, boom. Obviously this won't break anything. But then, render cell First of all, let's try child.depth. Seems to break. Couldn't find very. Oh, child. I meant cell. Okay, that works. And then here, cell.depth minus one. That works. We're going to get rid of this and get rid of this and get rid of this, this, and this. And it works. Okay. It must have been some kind of typo. Oh no, it was this! This child depth needs to be minus one. There we go. All right, boom. So now we are storing update cell, top cell, um, step size, might as well. Const update cell equals cell 
Step size? Forget it. Step size is a global. <clears throat> so, we're going to do something like... Um, through while eating dinner. Oh, I bet that post debug. Oopsie. <laughs> Come back here. I bet this post debug actually is one of the reasons it loads slow. No, it's not. It just literally takes that long. Interesting. Hmm. Time to do some more research. <laughs> This is the weird thing, okay? The future... The future of any... Um, macro cell... Is just the center of it. Right? Because... Um, if this macro cell is like, you know say, 1024 by 1024. To look one step in the future, the, the edge cells don't have enough information all by themselves. So instead, you populate the middle Should this simulation be centered on the middle of the top level node? Hmm. Instead of doing that, I should think of this process as building the tools necessary to compose the future. So this to do. Compose the cells well. To do.
we do want to be able to implement the function that takes a macro cell and computes its central feature. That's absolutely necessary. So const get future equals uh, get cell result equals cell so if cell dot height is equal to not zero because that's only a one by one and not one because that's only a two by two but two which is a three by three else okay a four by four grid can be naively solved. A 4x4 four four grids, 2x2 two two uh, result can be naively solved. Okay. Otherwise, piece together the solution from the child cells and temporary cells. Okay. <clears throat> Oh uh, boy. Okay. How do I want to iterate over these? There's probably a way to speed it up, but... Oh! Um, if cell.result isn't null, return cell.result. Um, let's try that again. How do I look up the result? cell result const get cell result equals cell to do look up pre-computed result um, return compute cell result cell so we're assuming right now that we aren't saving our work basically. <clears throat> so compute cell result. If cell height is 2, then we want the... We want those 16 states. Sorry, let me just draw this out. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Okay. We want 
A, B, C, G, K, J, I, E. So F, the future of F, the future of F is Let's see. Ah, here's what I can do. Um, if cell dot northwest dot southeast dot state. Okay, const northwest state equals northwest that's yep switch northwest state case head break tail break wire if it's a head then let northwest result equal here. case cell state dot dead. We need to handle all of them. Okay. If it's dead, then northwest result equals cell state dot dead. If it's head, northwest result equals cell state dot tail. If it's tail, then the result is wire. And then if it's wire, we need to iterate. Ugh. Is there any useful way to no, there's not. I'm just going to bite the bullet. <clears throat> I'm going to make a 2D array for just this exact reason. Const scrap paper equals array for dot fill dot map array for dot fill cell state dot dead. Okay. Is this really the best I can do? I shouldn't be asking myself that. This is a naive implementation. Naive, for now, could be optimized once everything's working. Scrap paper zero zero equals cell dot northwest dot northwest. One is northwest northeast. Two is northeast northwest. Three is northeast northeast. Here, we're going to do one, two, three. Northwest, 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 northwest. Okay, so then northwest, southwest, and southeast, and then south, north, and then south, south. No, there's no benefit in keeping this scrap paper around. We're just going to name these. 
const upper uh, lower. Okay. about how this would iterate. So const, here's what we'll do, const northwest equals compute naive cell dot West and then oh cell dot northwest dot southeast and then an array northeast okay so northeast southwest southeast let me just double check that northwest northeast southwest southeast great okay so northwest northeast southwest southeast and then the opposites Southeast, southwest, southwest, northeast, southeast, northwest. <clears throat> and then Okay, this is how it should be. One, zero, one, one. Okay, northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. Compute naive. Const compute naive equals um, cell four by four. Instead of giving these names, I could make a children array. Children. No. Children. Northwest, northeast. Southwest, southeast. <clears throat> Cell dot children. Going to uppercase these. Child index, okay. Const equals zero, one, two, three. 
Okay, and then const state equals No, I'm prematurely optimizing again. <clears throat> I'm just looking for an easy way to write what I'm trying to write. Because this is arduous. So cell.northwest.northwest cell.northwest.northeast cell.northeast.northwest cell... <laughs> this is so stupid. I'll name them. That's what I'll do. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Const. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Equals. Cell.northwest.northwest. .northwest, northeast cell.northeast.northwest, cell.northeast.northeast, boom, 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 northwest.south, south, 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 and this one, southeast, and this one, southeast, this one southwest, and this one southwest. Let's look at this a second time. Northwest, northwest. So all of these are northwest. Yep. All of these are southwest. All of these are northeast, and all of these are southeast. And then north, northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast, northwest, northeast. Okay. Now we have nicknames for these jerks, and so I can say F. J. Uh, whoops. F G. J. K. And the neighbors of F are A B C E G I J K. And the neighbors of G are B C D F H J K L. And the neighbors of J are E, F, G, I, K, M, N, O. And the neighbors of Southeast are, uh, of, uh, of K are F, G, H, J, L, N, O, P. There we go. So now we have Compute leaf result. Compute leaf. Yes. Okay. And then we look for a key. And we look it up. Um, so we're going to call this... Depth 
northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. And up here, const lookup equals depth, northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. Um, is depth necessary? It's not. Northwest depth becomes northwest dot depth plus one. Cool. And then down here, return lookup northwest northeast. Okay. It's not necessary. Boom. Okay. Now we need to implement compute leaf. Const compute leaf equals cell um, leaf neighbor. const old state equals leaf.state. Forget that. Switch leaf.state. Case cell state.dead. Break. Break, break, break. Okay. Dead tail head wire. Dead tail, head, wire, <laughs> wed, wire, return, leaf, or really, return, cell states to leaves, um, dot get cell state dot dead. This is also tedious, so const dead leaf equals cell states to leaves dot get cell state dot dead. We're going to just do this. Tail, head, wire. So now we can just say dead leaf. Return dead leaf. Case tail, return wire leaf. Head, return tail leaf. And then for the wire, for let i equals zero, i is less than eight, i plus plus. Um, right, this needs like a block, doesn't it? I think it does. Wire. is zero. I'll just do this. That's fine. I mean, it's not very readable. <laughs> um, I don't know if I need that break after the return. It's probably not necessary, but I'll let the prettifier uh, decide.
There we go. <coughs> it just occurred to me that because these leaves, dead leaf, tail leaf, head leaf, wire leaf, stand in for the cell states, we might as well just switch over that. Unless it's slow. Okay. Oopsie. Sure. We'll revisit that. So, after neighbor counting... If it's one or two, return head leaf. Else, return tail leaf. Okay. So that gives us these and we can arrange them into a new future. So that's how we do it for a 4x4. Four four. Can't test it yet, because nothing actually calls compute cell result. Call compute cell result inside here. This is where we do the of that, and the future of that, and the future of that, and the future of that. And we build right, okay. Phase one, uh, three by three, and then phase two, uh, two by two. Okay, so const temp north equals look up. cell dot cell dot northwest dot northeast cell dot northeast dot northwest cell dot northwest dot southeast cell dot northeast dot southwest so we are constructing this north cell. We also need a temp south, a temp east, and a temp west. So south is going to be just that, right? Let me think that through. Southwest, northeast, southeast, northwest, 
Southwest, southeast, southeast, southwest. That's correct. Now these I'll want to rewrite. Um, and I'm going to do temp west first. So it's going to be northwest, southwest, and then southwest, or sorry, northwest, southeast. So boom, boom. And then boom, boom. So southwest, whoopsie. Southwest, southwest. And so southwest, northwest, southwest, northeast. Northwest, southwest. Okay, north. <laughs> Confusing myself. Let's take another look. Ugh. Cell dot northwest dot southwest. Cell dot northwest dot southwest. And then northwest southeast. And then southwest northwest. And then southwest northeast. Okay. And then temp E is instead of mm, oopsie is this becomes east and this becomes east let's try that again cell dot northeast dot southwest cell dot northeast dot southeast Cell.southeast, northwest. Cell, southeast, northeast. Okay. Oops. So, that gives us these four cells. We actually want their results. So equals get cell result for that cell. Right? Yes. Const Northwest result equals get cell result cell dot northwest. Northeast, southwest, southeast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are missing the center one. Const temp center result. And that's going to be northwest, southeast, northeast, southwest, southwest, northeast, southeast, northwest, right? Northwest, southeast, northeast, southwest, southwest, northeast, southeast, northwest. Great. So from that, <laughs> we've got our 3x3. Three three. Oh, look at that. How nice. Yeah. John Williamson's code is more succinct. But now that I have these results, you know what? I shouldn't call these Northwest result and so on. Um,
So northwest I'm going to call A, north I'm going to call B, northeast I'm going to call C, west I'm going to call D, temp I'm going to, uh, center I'm going to call E, uh, east I'm going to call F, southwest I'm going to call G, uh, south I'm going to call H, and southeast I'm going to call I. And we are just going to sort these real quick. Sort. And get rid of these underscores. Upper. Okay. And you know what? I'm actually going to take a page from above, const. Um, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I equals, and I don't need to put these in the same kind of structure. I can just list them like this. There we go. So that's phase one. And then phase two is const p, q, r, s equals get cell result. And these are all going to be lookups. Okay. So P is A, B, D, E. A, B, D, E. A, B, D, E. Q is B, C, E, F. B, C, E, F. R is D, E, G, H. D, G, E, H. And I, uh, sorry, and S is E, F, H, I. E, F, H, I. And then finally we do a return lookup PQRS, I think. Just thinking this through. It's interesting that there's this pattern here. 
but in this Python implementation. Oh, I see. This looks more regular because <clears throat> m.a.a, m.a.b, m.a.c, m.a.d is just an array of those. Huh. M. So this gets us the resulting center of the current cell. The more I think about it, the more I believe, I mean, I could be mistaken, but I believe that all of the cells in the input need to occupy the center of the topmost cell. So really, size, while size is less than max dimension. So really it needs to be size is less than max dimension times two, I think. And then in its cell, or really reset, uh, in its cell. This needs to be, I think, size over two. And then render cell here also needs to be size over two, I think. Well, I broke it. Let's find out why. No reason why. <sighs> okay. Um. Oh, because, right of this. Instead of doing that,
I just can't imagine this working unless this diagram occupied the center of the simulation. In other words, the simulation's top node would have enough room for the first thing to be... Does that make any sense? Huh. Yes, it does. Okay. If it's enclosed by a vacuum, then a lot of the logic inside in its cell doesn't have to run. Because we know it's empty. Okay, that's what's going to happen. Top cell is fine. We'll let it do its thing, but... So instead of tree depth, it's going to be tree depth... Okay, so... Const center cell equals in its cell tree depth minus one okay and then vacuum equals um, in its cell is the vacuum has the same depth as the children of the center cell center cell children equals in its cell dot children child nodes is that what it's called hang on oh right no we don't have children okay center cell that's fine 
So top cell equals lookup and it's gonna be well hang on top cell northwest a b well p q r s equals lookup vacuum 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 center cell dot northwest top cell equals lookup p q r s okay northeast southwest southeast except let's see And each of these is going to contain a vacuum, P, Q, R, S. OK. So P is vacuum, 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 northwest. Um, might as well call it Northwest, Southwest, Northeast, Southeast. Okay. Northwest, Northeast, Southwest, Southeast. <coughs> so vacuum, 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 Northwest. Vacuum, vacuum, Northeast, vacuum. So this becomes like that. And then These vacuum calls go here and southeast goes over here. Okay. So that builds top cell in the middle. surprise there. We now need to fix render. Render cell. If math.random is less than 0 0.01 post debug let's just see how many we get that's a lot okay 389 isn't so bad let's cut it up a little more 200 or so Post debug X, Y. Okay.
Maybe size over two. Nope, that's altogether wrong. Cell dot state. Okay. Hmm. I could do this. Oh, wait a minute. Twos and threes. Engine common, cell state, zero, one, two, three. Okay, no surprise there. Yeah, most of the wires are dead. So. If cell dot state is not equal to cell state dot dead and and it's mostly twos, we are going to ramp up this random value. There we go. We're seeing some zeros and ones now. Hmm. What is the math? Post debug vacuum. I want to see what one of these looks like. It has a depth of nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. State three, which is to be expected. State three is dead. Okay. So the vacuum is looking good. Um, let's look at top cell real quick. So it's northwest, northwest should be cool, 4606, 4606, and then it's southeast should be 4032, cool, okay. Our simulation is sitting in the middle of its quad tree. The problem is with render cell.
Ah, here's what I'll do. Uh, there are not a lot of heads. I will have it post them all. First and foremost. Four and a half thousand. X, Y. Okay, x minus 512, y minus 512. Well, that didn't help. Oh, it's just doing a lot. Okay, fair enough. Um, let's try this. y minus equals 512, x minus equals 512. There they are. Okay, 512 is currently a magic number, but um, <clears throat> post debug size is 2048. 2048 over 512 is 4. Okay. So. We want. <clears throat> this needs to be like this. Um, well, let's try this instead. Um, minus 512, minus 512. Same, good. That means we don't have to be over here. And this can be size over four. Nice, okay. Back in action. All that just to get the simulation centered. Um, but it is working. At least reset is still working and render is still working. I'm going to just briefly run prettier because I have a hunch it's going to make mincemeat out of those cool diagrams. Yep, there you go. That's a shame. Um, and let's see what it did with... Yeah. Okay, so the next step 
Well, first of all, we're gonna say, um, here, hang on. Prettier, um, ignore file. There's probably a comment that we can put. Mm -mm. see what happens. Macro cell still got formatted. Cool. It didn't mess with any of those um, That said, the actual code we want to commit is a subset of that. So, This is good. One moment, please. Render cell, we want to stage that. We don't want compute leaf just yet. Or compute cell result or get cell result. So we want this, stage lines. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> and I'll just make sure that get cell result, compute cell result, and compute leaf. Compute leaf is only in compute cell result, which is only in get cell result. which, again, is only in compute cell result. Cool. Um, now, what all did we do? Right, renamed uh, tree height and height parameter of recursive functions to tree depth and cell depth. We also 
expanded the top node so that the full simulation occupies its center grandchildren. Complicated. And you know what? I'm just going to stash these changes real quick. Compute. And make sure that that still works properly. It does. Okay. Let's bring that back. Okay. So, const, well, if cell.result is null, cell.result equals <coughs> I think its result is going to be compute cell result. Cell dot result. Right, so cache get is only used I see. So instead of result, let's make this result key. If result key is null, then dot key. Get cell result key. No, there is no key field. Yeah, there's no key field. Um, so that's not how it works. Macro cell points to its result. That's a problem for when we try to get rid of... Yeah, I'm just going to emphasize here. Um, and so are its children and results. Tricky. So we know every time we update the top cell, we need to pad it with vacuum again. So, const center cell, we're going to say top cell equals pad.
cell. Pad cell. That's appropriate. Is this really how it's supposed to work? Not sure. This is nice. John Williamson says the hashing constants are a bit... Oh, wait, never mind. I misunderstood what that was. I'm using strings. I'm not sure if that's a good call, but I can always replace that. Get zero K. Okay. So, our vacuum does a get zero K. Center does this. Okay. Fair enough. So, instead of piggybacking on in its cell, which is expensive, I'll say const init vacuum equals depth if depth equals zero return dead leaf else return lookup Uh, let's see. Const child equals init vacuum depth minus one. Return lookup child, 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 child. So that should speed things along. So I'm only calling init vacuum once per. I think this is good. 
And then instead of that, it's init vacuum, tree depth minus two. Let's try that. Still works. And then this is the padding. So const pad cell equals cell. Center. Return. Look up those. And I could just do this. So now pad cell, top cell equals pad cell, center cell, and instead of tree depth minus two, it's going to be center cell dot depth minus one. Let's hope. And it worked. As far as we know. Okay, so init vacuum, I'm gonna rename init empty cell. Vacuum, I'm gonna replace with empty. And center cell, I'm gonna rename cell. Okay, in an empty cell, in its cell, look up, initialize, okay. Um, this size divided by four. Yeah, I'll keep it there for now, but it could potentially be moved up into reset instead. Um, okay. I'm going to leave this the way that it currently looks. Because we haven't tested it yet. So pad cell goes into update top cell equals pad cell tops uh, get cell result top cell. So get cell result of the top cell is going to return a cell, the center cell of top cell, 
and then we pad it out again. And then get cell result relies on cell result computes it if it doesn't exist. I'm just going to take all of this, compute cell result, I will put it in here. And instead of return, it's going to be cell.result equals, look up those things. Okay, out of curiosity, I'm going to advance one step. Null is not an object evaluating cell result. Get cell result cell. Very interesting. Not, not terribly unexpected, but here's what I'll do. Post debug cell dot depth or no all the way down to zero cool oh cell dot height that's why okay dot height needs to be depth okay advance se.id gonna switch into Firefox so we get some more information um, clear it there we go debugger Let's look at that stack. Cool. Advance called update, get cell result, and look up. So, look up. If northwest equals null, or northeast equals null, or southwest equals null, or southeast equals null, post debug northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. Southeast is undefined. Something, somewhere. Okay. Leaf, dead leaf, wire leaf, tail leaf. Oh, wire leaf. But that wouldn't cause the problem. Okay, 
Okay, cell dot result equals lookup. If cell depth is two. F-G-H-J-L-N-O-P. Okay. F-G-J-K. Depth of one. Depth of zero. <coughs> hmm. Cell dot northwest, cell dot depth, cell dot northwest dot depth, cell dot northeast dot depth, cell dot southwest dot depth, cell dot southeast dot depth. <coughs> okay. Something has the wrong depth. And my guess is in an empty cell is being given the wrong... Minus two, maybe. Nope. Hmm. This is another one of those arbitrary numbers that could just be hiding a bug. Okay. This cell dot depth, it's really like cell dot northwest dot depth. Could also just as easily leave out pad cell for now, return cell. Still undefined. D's plus plus. If math.random is less than 0 0.01, post debug IDs. That is nowhere near the integer limit, so there goes that theory. bug. Some part of the... some parts of the...
some macro cells are being made that have a child of the wrong depth. I wonder where. I'll admit I am intrigued enough that I might poke around between now and the next episode to figure out where that bug is. Just like last week, I completely forgot to share the philosophical significance of macro cells and hash life. doesn't really make sense to put it in the middle, uh, or rather at the end of the stream, so I'll bring it up, hopefully, <laughs> during the next episode. Some jerk. Here's an idea. Ah, here's an idea. In Macrocell, in Lookup, okay, in Lookup, if northwest.depth isn't equal to northeast.depth, or northwest.depth is not equal to southwest.depth, or northwest.depth is not equal to southeast.depth, post debug um, you know, throw When are you made in get cell result? Okay. So they're being made during computation, fortunately. So that rules out um, any of the functions that we wrote other than the ones called directly by update. Very weird. Northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. And it's in get cell result 192 PQRS. Post debug. Okay. If p.depth is not equal to q.depth, or p.depth is not equal to r.depth, or p.depth is not equal to s.depth, You know what? Post debug A dot depth, B dot depth, C dot depth, D dot depth, E dot depth, F dot depth, G dot depth, H dot depth, I dot depth. There it 
they all have the right depth. A through I. Which is good. A, B, D, E. So Q, oh, P, Q, R, S. S is okay, so we're just going to isolate this to S. E dot depth, F dot depth, H dot depth, I dot depth. Oh, well, that does make sense. Oh, no, get cell result. Okay. So... result This shouldn't happen. Okay. Narrowing down the cause. In get cell result. result dot depth isn't equal to one throw hmm post debug Cell dot result dot depth.
Tons of them are ones. Why would any of them be a two? It's pretty late, so I'm going to wrap it up. Some macro cells. Okay, so. Some. The results of some 2x2. Two two. Is it 2x2 two two or 4x4? Four 4x4. Four? Four four. The results of some 4x4 four four macro cells. by two Mac, uh, southeast children. For now, I'll leave that empty. And empty cell, pad cell. Lots of good stuff. Isolated in an empty cell and pad cell from reset function. Implemented update function, but some bug is causing four by four macro cells, some four by four macro cells to have two by two results, uh, two by two children in their two by two results. Very strange. And um, I'll tag that. This is episode, what episode is it? So tag episode underscore. Okay. Episode underscore 12. We'll get to the bottom of this. I'll do some investigation before the next stream. Um, I bet it's something interesting. I just discovered that I've lost internet. So I will finish the recording and thank you for watching. I will see you next week. <laughs>